There seems to be a lot of very small cloud providers that are rising up right now. Should you care about it? Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider, where we talk about the truth of cloud computing and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek. So first and foremost, thank you very much. I just hit 100,000 subscribers. Uh, as you can see with the banner I put on the thumbnail, uh, probably well past that by the time you see this video, but uh, couldn't done it without you. I kind of put a goal on myself to get to at least 50,000 subscribers within a year's time in running the channel. And you guys have exceeded all my expectations. Uh, I hit 100,000, uh, probably about seven, six or seven months into it at this point. So I couldn't have done this without everybody who liked and subscribed and provide comments and shared the video. So I cannot appreciate you guys more. So these small cloud providers that are starting to emerge, I call them micro clouds. Um, I may have coined the word, but uh, I'll, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> so we're dealing with smaller cloud providers. And this is kind of interesting because if you remember back in the early days of cloud computing, there was probably 20 to 30 uh, major cloud providers around, including Amazon and a few others. Uh, every tel every uh, telecom company had a cloud and sometimes consulting companies had clouds. Everybody was trying to get their uh, innovation into the mix. And of course, the market normalized and we normalized down to about six major cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft, Google, uh, Oracle. Ali, uh, Alibaba, Ali Cloud, uh, and um, uh, missing one, IBM. So the idea was that uh, it took a lot of money and time to invest in building a cloud. You had to have points of presence all over the world. You had to build core services that everybody was looking for. So it wasn't something that smaller companies could get into just because the amount of investment that needed to occur. So. Obviously, we innovated from there and uh, things have changed. So we saw, uh, in essence, the larger cloud providers rise up and we're still dealing with them today. The big three, AMG, Amazon, Microsoft, Google are the ones that most people use. But we're also seeing a bunch of innovative startups and cloud providers starting to rise up in the space that are starting to take on different roles and different values. And they have a bit different value proposition than some of the larger cloud providers. And people are starting to pay attention to them and use these cloud providers, and perhaps for good reasons. Let's figure out why. So what was interesting last week, I read a uh, uh, article about the uh, Lidl, L-I-D-L, which is a grocery store here in the United States, but obviously I think they started in Europe. I think they're based in Germany, that uh, created their own small cloud provider for their country, in this case Germany, which was a sovereign cloud that... Uh, they're selling as something that's separate and distinct from the grocery business, which I think is interesting. And we're seeing lots of companies starting to take this path as well. So in other words, they have infrastructure that they're able to rent, you know, very much like Airbnb for your stuff in, in, within your data center. And they're combining it into a very simplistic cloud offering, which is serving a particular country, in this case, Germany, which means it's a sovereign cloud. And we're, we're seeing lots of other smaller cloud offerings in Europe as people are unwilling or uh, a little suspicious of putting their data into the larger cloud providers that are out there, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, which is interesting. And people are using these clouds with some fairly good results. In other words, everything's local. They don't have necessarily have a latency issue. Uh, the thing is in the same city that they operate in. They, they love that. They love the ability to go to the data center and see the servers without necessarily throwing your stuff, your applications and data into a large cloud provider where in many instances it could be transported and run outside the country and you're dealing with laws and certainly the laws and regulations of Europe are pretty strict in terms of where data exists and where it's stored. So in many cases, these turned out to be um, better bets for companies in particular co uh, countries. And I think Lido saw this as a uh, an opportunity for them and uh, built built their cloud. And uh, so we're seeing some of this stuff starting to emerge today. So who are the micro cloud providers out there? <clears throat> well, here's a brief summary. You have CoreWeave, they specialize in providing cloud solutions optimized for AI and machine learning, uh, providing GPUs as a service in essence. And we're seeing a bunch of these uh, types of clouds starting to emerge. Typically they have a .AI 
And they're providing very expensive AI infrastructure as a service and competing with the larger cloud providers. Obviously, you can get a GPU as a service with some of the bigger cloud providers, but that's all they focus on is AI. And providing GPU systems and some of the, the basic AI tooling, just focusing on building and deploying and operating AI-based systems. And CoreWe was one of the major players out there that are doing this. Lambda Labs, they offer a tailored cloud service focused on deep learning and artificial intelligence, again, focused on the GPU uh, market and uh, the AI market. And it's a niche. In other words, they're just focusing on building AI applications. They're not trying to host your inventory control systems. They just do that really well. And they're able in some instances to provide a better value proposition than some of the other larger cloud providers. Uh, Canonical's MicroCloud provides lightweight open source cloud solutions designed for user deployment and cost efficiency. Uh, that's another one which is offering basic services. They um, offer Ubuntu and Linux-based systems uh, through their system. So that wouldn't be an AI-focused thing, but again, it's a niche. Um, they're not necessarily trying to deploy and offer all of the services you can find in AWS or you can find in Google or you can find in Microsoft. But just the core services that you're looking for and doing it at a price point, which is typically going to be more value oriented than some of the big cloud providers. Scaleway, based in France, uh, they, again, a, a regional service. They have virtual machines and storage, and they have competitive pricing. They do European data centers. And again, uh, if you have a data sovereignty concern, if you're in Europe, they're, they're leaning into that concern. In other words, providing a French-based company. Uh, and EU-based uh, data centers. Uh, so if companies are concerned about that, just like we saw with Lido, Lido I think, hopefully I'm saying that right, um, then uh, that's something you can look, in, look into as a regional provider. Obviously, it doesn't make sense if you're in the United States to leverage a regional provider that's in France. It just is designed to serve only the French marketplace. But for their niche and what they're trying to do, it's really effective for the companies that are in France that are looking for sovereign-based clouds to provide these solutions. Other things occur, some of the more uh, well-known DigitalOcean, they target developers and SMBs with a cost-effective cloud infrastructure, again, focusing on the value components. Alinode, which are now part of Alchemy, Alchemy uh, they provide infrastructure as a service. Again, an Amazon alternative and cloud hosting services that are popular among small businesses and developers for the transparent pricing and ease of use. So what this means is we have choice out there. So while it's easy and typically the path of least resistance to use some of the bigger cloud providers, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, in many cases, it may make sense to use a micro cloud based on their ability to support an, uh, a particular niche part of the market, AI, for example, application development, container-based processing, and those things exist out there, and probably some pretty good pricing based on the their counterparts with the larger cloud providers. So again, it's not one-stop shopping for building everything you need to build in the cloud. I mean, obviously, AWS, Microsoft, and Google are the places to go for that. But if you're looking to build a very narrowly focused application, for example, generative AI systems, these are worth a look because they may be able to save you some money. And again, in the AI world, where this stuff is so expensive, certainly utilization of GPUs, that's going to be millions of dollars over the life cycle of the application, of the AI application you're running. So it's worth the consideration. So again, we're, there are micro clouds out there that cater to the GPU offerings out there. Again, GPUs are very expensive. People were hoarding GPUs when, they, when there was a perceived shortage six or seven months ago, which is kind of weird. Um, and in many cases, you don't need to use GPUs to build AI systems. And certainly with Agentic AI and other lightweight AI solutions, as we covered in the uh, uh, lightweight versus heavyweight AI-based systems, um, you don't need these systems. But there's a certain number of organizations out there that's all they're going to use, um, whether right or wrong. And so those are going to be very expensive very GPU extensive solution to the training, to the inference engines around some of these AI systems. And we're starting to see a huge emergence of uh, micro clouds in the AI space. And for good reason, they're able to provide better economic choices for companies just looking to build AI systems. They're not looking to build, you know, generic systems on these, on these things, not a traditional system. For that, use a regular cloud or use some of the on-premises systems that you have. 
but they're just focusing on the AI space. And obviously CoreWeave and Lambda Labs, uh, the biggest examples of that. And they're able to provide you know better customization, optimized performance, and they're probably easier to deal with. You can get them on the phone. You can have them customize a certain server set based on your specific needs. And so if a business is out there, enterprises out there, many of them have very unique needs around the utilization of AI. They can't find them via the dashboards on some of these larger cloud providers and these uh, micro clouds focusing on AI makes sense. So the next type of micro cloud, and we already had, already addressed this above, um, sovereign and regional clouds. Uh, and again, the reason that we want to use them is because these clouds specialize in understanding the local regulatory requirements and latency concerns in working with businesses in Canada, you know, perhaps different provinces of Canada, working in businesses within France, working with it within businesses within Germany or the UK. So even though they're not a major cloud provider with points of presence all over the world, for some businesses who are just maintaining data processing within their particular country and want to make sure they don't run afoul of some of these regulatory requirements and uh, also don't have to worry about latency issues if they don't have a point of presence of a bigger cloud provider near them, you know, these things make, make sense. And I see a rise in interest in these, not necessarily pushing away some of the larger cloud providers, but using these in addition to uh, some of the large cloud provider systems that, that enterprises are leveraging out there. So again, the benefits would be um, cost-effective, limited cap capabilities of some of these clouds. So in other words, they're more cost-effective and therefore they're cheaper, uh, but they're going to have limited capabilities. They're not going to have the scalability to the degree of an AWS, and they're not going to have certainly not the variety of services uh, that's on AWS, Microsoft, or Google, which is why we leverage them. In other words, they have storage, they have databases, hundreds of databases, they have hundreds of governance systems, hundreds of middleware systems, hundreds of application development platforms, hundreds of, hundreds of AI platforms. And if you're trying to get to something where you don't necessarily know where you're going and you're trying to find one size fits all cloud, those are normally gonna be a better choice, but you're gonna pay for that choice. They're expensive. Um, and some of these smaller micro clouds um, are uh, providing um, better uh, providing niche solutions that are able to solve the problem uh, and they're going to charge you a cheaper amount of money and they're typically going to be easier to deal with. You have you can get somebody on the phone, like I mentioned earlier, you can do customization of the various systems. They're a bit more open uh, to deal with and they're a bit more uh, able to work with you on particular niche needs that you may have for your applications. And so that's always going to be an option. Again, I don't see these guys displacing much of the larger cloud providers, the big three, uh, but I do see them having an impact in the market as companies realize that the larger cloud providers are very expensive, in some cases cost prohibitive, and we talked about that on this, uh, on this show lots of times, and there's other options that may be a better fit. So what are some of the challenges and considerations? Well, uh, the risks of using uh, micro clouds such as limited geographic coverage fewer resources compared to larger providers. So if I'm in France and I'm leveraging a sovereign cloud provider, which is a micro cloud, which is all well and good until I build and expand my company outside of that country. And I'm into the UK, I'm into the United States and the micro cloud provider I'm using may not have points of presence in those. And most of them don't if they're a sovereign cloud provider in those other countries. And so that's going to provide me with some difficulty. I can certainly use a cloud provider over country borders, but there's going to be latency based on the fact we're using them over thousands of miles versus hundreds of miles uh, if you're dealing with a sovereign cloud. So you got to understand the pros and cons of this. Micro cloud providers are really there to address a specific business need. And if you don't have that business need, you shouldn't consider them. But if you do have that business need, they should be in a contender uh, with some of the larger cloud providers based on the fact that we can save millions of dollars in using these kinds of providers over many years based on the fact they're able to return more value back to the business because they charge less money and they're easier to deal with. So what are the future outlooks for mic micro clouds? Um, I think it's not necessarily going to be explosive growth. I think it's going to be growth around a niche need that... Um, Many of these smaller companies are going to exploit. We, we are going to see companies like Leto, Leto, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, that are going to 
um, offshoot their own cloud offerings, very much like Amazon did. You know, back in the 2000s, they built a cloud offering and then offered it to the public um, based on selling some of their capacity that they didn't need during the off season. They're trying, they're doing that at a much more smaller level. So we are going to see some new upstarts that are starting to get in the marketplace. Either those are going to be existing traditional businesses like a grocery store chain uh, in this case uh, that are going to pivot and part of their company uh, into providing a micro cloud. We're also going to see some investor-based growth, some private equity growth of some of the AI-based technologies, the ability to run specific container-based technologies, the ability to run supercomputers, the ability to run quantum computers, things that typically the larger cloud providers may have an interest in but haven't necessarily provided high-value offerings in those spaces. And so, in other words, it's probably easier to deal with a micro-cloud provider when we're dealing with a niche-based solution, specialized technology than it is to deal with some of the larger cloud providers. So keep that in mind. So I think this stuff is important in terms of the evolution of the cloud computing marketplace. I like to see com competition. I like to see options. You know, as someone who's done a lot of architecture and done a lot of picking of different technologies, things like that, I know it can be a fairly daunting thing to go out into the market that is getting extremely complex. And certainly with the addition of micro clouds, we're not just picking from six cloud providers anymore, three, three major cloud providers, we're picking from dozens and dozens of providers that do particular things that we, we may want to use them for. Also, when you add into that, the addition of the managed service providers and the co-location providers and all of these other options that are available to us if we're moving into the cloud to provide these capabilities. And again, with the overall objective, of trying to return the most value back to the business, which is primarily why we want to leverage cloud computing, I hope. Well, that's gonna be it. I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my InfoWorld blog, check out my course on Go Cloud Careers, check out my courses on LinkedIn Learning. I have some new stuff popping up uh, in the next couple of months. You're gonna to wanna to check that out. You know, also follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on X, and comment below and let me know what you think about the, uh, about the show and what uh, topics you would like me to cover. I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, you guys stay real safe. Cheers.